Hey, Sun here, I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In last episode, I talked about Super Backed OS and how I was wanting to achieve uh, a file system on which one could run Super Backed without data persistence. Now, you may know of Tails OS. Some of you said in the comments, what's the difference between Super Backed OS and Tails OS? Uh, and I wanna take a moment to kind of explain this. But for those of you who don't even know what Tails OS is, well, Tails OS is a special operating system that you install on a USB flash drive. And when you boot Tails OS, anything that happens on Tails does not persist on that USB flash drive. So data persistence is disabled by design, but Tails does not stop there. Tails is really an operating system that is designed for people with sensitive use cases, such as whistleblowers, so that they can use Tails to connect to the internet over the dark net using Tor. Uh, and that's a way for them to communicate with the outside world without leaving traces because all of the data is routed through the Tor network. Uh, but also no data is ever persisted unless one uh, deterministically wants to. And there's a way on Tails to have persistent storage, but by default it's disabled. So Tails is a very sophisticated and elaborate uh, way of connecting to the dark net in a non-persistent way. But initially I thought I would use Tails for super backed because I've been using Tails for a while. But the problem with Tails is uh, it's really hard to have apps kind of provisioned on it. Uh, and it's also extremely hard to print. I wasn't able to print. And that's why I wanted to develop a much uh, easier way for you guys to use super backed. Uh, this is a good segue to say that there is a promo code down there in the description, the first 10 people get $50 off, same price as the waiting list. So yeah, jump on that. That said, um, I wanna talk to you guys about how I went about setting up Super Backed OS uh, and how it's different from Tails. So there is a really, really, really cool project on uh, the Debian you know, world that's called Overlay uh, Root. It's super cool. So the really cool property of Overlay Root is that you can install all the stuff that you want, set up Ubuntu the way you want. That means you can install super backed, you can install dependencies, you can make it the way you like it, and then you can flick a switch and at the next boot, it will create an abstraction on top of root, root is slash, and everything that happens will not persist to the disk. And that is achieved using RAM disks. So RAM disks are a way to kind of tell the operating system to treat part of the RAM as if it was a hard drive. So overlay root will essentially overlay a RAM disk on top of the normal like disk file system. So everything will persist in memory and when you power off the computer, it all vanishes. So that's very similar to how Tails works. Um, and to that extent, I just published two guides on the Privacy Guides reference material. So if you go on the website, um, there's a guide on how to do this for Intel computers, and there's a guide on how to do this for Raspberry Pis. Those guides are what I used to set up the foundations of Super Backed OS. So I thought I would share this. Um, at the end of the episode, I'll go into some nitty gritty details of how to make it like, uh, how to disable persistence at a data forensic level. So there's a few other tweaks that took me quite some time to kind of figure out. Um, but that's really nerdy, so I'll keep this for the end of the episode. So really, Super Backed OS is a way of booting a familiar Ubuntu environment, making sure that data persistence is disabled, and that's done using overlay root. Now, if you're a Mac user, there's also something really cool that can be done on Mac OS uh, using disk util. So uh, there's this little piece of code here, which uh, you, know, you can elaborate on, but I was looking for a way of running Electrum, so the Bitcoin Electrum wallet, uh, on, in, in an ephemeral way. So I didn't like the idea if you're using a hardware wallet, for instance, to store your keys, you may want to be able to connect uh, to you know other Bitcoin nodes, whatever, uh, in a way that does not persist on the disk. So say you want to have it in a way where really the hardware wallet is everything and the computer is really just an interface to the blockchain. Well, you can run this little script, which is super cool. So essentially what happens here is uh, we're creating a disk that is a RAM disk. I think this is about the equivalent of 100 megabytes. Then we're partitioning it as APFS and it will be mounted as temp. And then we're running Electrum and we're telling it that the wallet file is stored on temp. 
That means that when you start Electrum that way, it will essentially create an ephemeral wallet on that RAM disk, meaning that as soon as the computer is powered off or the RAM disk is dismounted, uh, data will never have persisted on the internal hard drive of the Mac. And that is like super cool. Um, so yeah, and then the cool thing too is once you quit Electrum using Control C, um, it will actually dismount or eject the RAM disk when you're using this little piece of command line stuff. So that's super useful. So yeah, in a nutshell, temp fs or overlay root is a really cool way on Linux to have an abstraction that is read only on top of a file system that you know you created initially. Um, the guide here goes through how to do this. So I'll link it down there in the description. And on Mac OS, you also have a really cool way of setting up RAM disks and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I thought that'd be useful for you guys to know about. I mean, I didn't know about this stuff initially and it's really powerful once you get hold of how it works. Um, so yeah, now's the nerdy part. Uh, if you go on the guide here, uh, it's a pretty elaborate guide, by the way. That's why I created Super Mac OS. I didn't want you guys to have to go through all of this uh, to just try things out. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if you wanna have a sense of what's needed and how to do it the super backed way, you can go down that route. Uh, and eventually we'll get to here where you can you know, provision Ubuntu the way you like it. Uh, and then uh, this here overlay root, that's the dependency that you need to install to be able to enable the tempfs overlay root. Uh, and that's done down here, uh, fast forwarding here. Uh, that's done here. So step 13, that's when you tell it, you know, set the overlay root to tempfs. Tempfs is essentially a RAM disk. So that's super cool. Now, if you want this to be, uh, you know, if you want to disable data persistence at the data forensics level, there's a few other things in the context of Linux that might change something on the disk and that will yield a different checksum. Uh, and in order to mitigate this, you need to make sure that you mount the ext4 file system as read only and more importantly you want to disable journaling so by default you know ext4 has journaling that means that if something changes on it say you shut down the computer really quickly um, it will be, try to recover you know the file system if you're running a read only operating system you don't need this so that's where no load uh, comes into play. It will not lo load the journal and it will set it as read only. And this second line here will do the same for the slash boot partition that typically is a FAT32. And then the other thing, and that took me quite some time to figure out and thankfully I had some help on Stack Exchange. Uh, you wanna disable the file system check repair because that you know, by repairing stuff will change again the file system, which will yield a different cryptographic checksum. Uh, so if you're really setting things up and you wanna make sure that from a data forensic standpoint, nothing changes when you use it, you wanna make sure that you go through those steps. Now, uh, the things that you need to do on Raspberry Pi are ever so slightly different. So there's a guide for this. And there's also a really cool thing here that if you don't know about and you're into Raspberry Pis, uh, this little block here is how you can disable Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So while the, the Raspberry Pi boots, it will actually disable those uh, wireless interfaces, which is really good if you want to um, air gap a Raspberry Pi. So that's all I have for you today. Again, if you're into Superback, there's a promo code down there. The 10 first people that use it will get $50 off. Uh, if you have any questions about all of this RAM disk stuff, let me know in the comments. and. Yeah, I was supposed to create an episode on this little device here on the world's uh, most secure USB flash drive. So if you haven't smashed that subscribe button, uh, please do so. And I'll be talking about this in the next episode. I just thought, you know, this one was a good segue to last. So I'll see you soon. Bye.